We're talking about masterpiece fragrances today. Timeless fragrances. Fragrances that always smell modern. They don't smell like they came out at the time they came out. They smell like they could have come out 50 years ago or now or 50 years from now. Unless you have some kind of association or memory with a specific person, which I cannot control and which is by nature arbitrary. I think objectively speaking, these fragrances will always smell contemporary. They have something special about them. Some of them may have spawned a series of either flankers within the brand so it has created its own collection or they've inspired other brands to make fragrances like it. One thing to get out of the way, I'm one little guy. I have one little channel that I'm trying to grow and I have my little opinions. And as a result, this is borderline conjecture because I don't know if these fragrances will be sold forever. What determines a fragrance's sustainability is not necessarily how great it smells, it's how great it sells. Money rules everything, we already know this. So I would like to see these fragrances stick around for generations to come, but I believe that they can, that's just me. Let's dive right into it. And to make this video a little bit more interesting, we're going to be excluding some of these super obvious, super mass appealing fragrances that have been sold for a while and will continue to be and are still talked about in videos, stuff like Aventus, stuff like Aqua de Jo or Dolce & Gabbana The One. We know that they're popular. We know that they will be sold for a while and they've been in plenty of videos. So I don't know why you would want to see them in another one. I'd rather give you something more interesting and more novel. So no particular order here. I'm just going to choose from the crop of fragrances I have in front of me. We have 10 to choose from. We're going to start with the House of Creed. Instead of Aventus, I'm going to talk about Royal Oud. I believe this is a timeless masterpiece. There's parts of it that smell like it could have feelings of antiquity, but also complete modernity all at the same time. It's almost old world, very dry, dusty woods, a little bit of this slight warm sweetness in there, a little spicy, extremely classy and special. There's been nothing that has smelled like this before it came out and nothing that really smells like it since. At least if you're asking me, not really a nude fragrance, as people like to say, but doesn't matter. Still a great woody fragrance, still very elegant smelling. People have complained that it's been watered down formulation wise in terms of performance. I don't really care that much. I bought it anyway and I love it and it functions the way I need it to function. So to an extent, I don't really care what Creed does. I hope they keep this on the shelves because this is a very special fragrance. Again, masterpiece, Creed Royal Oud. Let's jump to a designer, one of my favorite designer houses period. Severely underrated in the context of the fragrance YouTube community, Cartier. And this is a classic, I believe from the late 90s, maybe 98. This is Declaration. This is composed by Jean-Claude Elena. And this might smell mature to you, but it doesn't smell dated. It has a very distinctive personality to it. You got to like cumin, lots of cumin in here. I'm going to give it a little spray here because I want this opening. It is so invigorating. It's so classy, oh, man, bitter orange, cardamom, fresh, cooling, sharp, bitter, mouthwatering with that spicy cumin in there that is a little stuffy, perhaps a little bit funky in a way, but so tastefully done here. Incredible composition from a designer house has definitely spawned a range of flankers for a reason. And this is not purely based on its popularity. Obviously it's been selling. That's why Cartier keeps it around, but there's something really special about it. I don't believe it's following heavy trends. This is its own thing. If you still have yet to try this, I recommend it. Cartier needs more love guys. we got to talk about it more in the YouTube community. If you're looking for something special, that's declaration coming from a niche brand known as Serge Luton. If you know the brand, you probably already know what I'm talking about. This has been one of their most popular fragrances. This is definitely a cult classic. And this is called Shergi. This is one of the most unique fragrances on the market. If I did a top 10 unique fragrances in my collection, this would be in the list. This stuff is not for everyone. Again, it's so definitive. It's so iconic. This is powdery dry, woody, tobacco, 
with sweet sticky honey a little bit of this barn feeling hay accord which honestly might sound strange but would be weird if it wasn't here it needs it it gives it its character it's kind of dark not as dark smelling as it looks here but it is pretty rich and dense it wears very elegantly it wears very unisex and I've never smelled a tobacco fragrance like this. Iris is making it powdery and soft and round around the edges while still being a little bit earthy and woody and having some texture to it. Very special fragrance. That is Shergi, true masterpiece. Let's talk about the house of Killian. And you know, maybe this is a hot take. I didn't choose a lot of the biggest fragrances that they're currently selling because I don't have them, honestly. Angel Share, it's fine. Black Phantom. Also fine, both good fragrances. But for me, what moves me and what smells like nothing that I've ever smelled before is straight to heaven. This captivated me at first sniff and not necessarily in a good way. I wasn't sure if I liked it. I wasn't sure if I could ever own it, but I couldn't stop smelling it. And it took me years to finally come around to getting it. And then after giving it some full wearings with the bottle, things kind of unlocked and I realized, okay, I love this stuff. And yeah, this is my own little opinion, as I said, but this thing has been around, I think since 2007, it's been over 15 years and it's still going strong. There's a reason for that. They made a flanker, an extreme flanker. Again, a reason for that, trying to bank off of its success. But regardless of its success, this is a stunning, timeless fragrance. It smells like it could have come out at any point in time. Also a woody fragrance with a lot of unique facets coming together. It's dry cedar wood that kind of grounds everything. But on top of that, you have this damp, earthy patchouli that's pretty forward with dried fruits and rum. So it's actually quite boozy with a little bit of vanilla tucked in there, adding this smoothness, a little sweet, not so much creamy, but mostly smooth because it is mostly woody. Incredible fragrance, smells like nothing else out there. Get a sample if you can. That is Killian straight to heaven. I still got to try the extreme. I'll do that sometime. Another designer, one that has already shown that it will stand the test of time because it came out almost 40 years ago. It's been less than 40 years, but it won't be long. This is Fahrenheit. From Dior. And again, unless you have like an uncle or a, a father or grandfather who wore this when it came out or around the time it was really, really popular. It smells like it could have come out at any time. It did not smell like all the other fragrances that were coming out in the late 80s or in the 80s period. Completely rocked the boat. People are like, what the heck is this? So timeless smelling. It's always contemporary. You may not like it because it's very odd, but honestly, Dior could have released this in the last 10 years and it would be heralded as something really special. So there's a reason why it's still selling. Now, I don't wear this a ton. I actually prefer the Parfum Flanker a little bit more, but I do believe that this has a better chance of being around for longer because it has such an iconic DNA, but it still is pretty well-rounded, and obviously it has created so many flankers, more than I care to actually check out. But the original, can't knock it. You may not like it, but timeless stuff. Prove me wrong. wrong. Again, and it can't be based on a subjective experience. We're talking objectiveness. Dior Fahrenheit. Now, this fragrance is undergoing a little bit of turmoil right now, but nonetheless, I've heard that it will return because it was discontinued, but not because it wasn't selling. It was for the intent of being sensitive to circumstances around the world. This is Oligarch from Raja Parfum. I hear that this is coming back under a different name. I surely hope it does because whatever the heck they call it, the scent is timeless to me. Now, some people say it smells similar to another fragrance that I'll probably talk about after this. I don't see it. This is its own thing. This has such a complexity to it, but it comes together in a very cohesive way to where, to me, it smells completely unique. It smells like it has its own identity. It has something special to it. It has a density, has a richness, but it has a freshness and a versatility. 
kind of hard to explain because it is pretty complex, but no one thing really pops out all that much. I think I do get a little bit of juniper berry, so there is a very prominent sharpness to the fragrance along with some citrus, lots of citrus, very bright, a little bit of fruit, maybe some apple, got a little bit of a tart apple in there, not overly sweet, but a little sweet for sure. And then lots going on in the base. A little bit of a green, almost eucalyptus feel. That's just something I get when I smell it up close. I don't think it's in there, but a stunning profile, very versatile, very easy to wear for most people, but very high quality and special. That is going to be oligarch or whatever the heck it'll be called. Maybe you're seeing this video in the future and it's already out and it already has a new name. And the designer fragrance I wanted to talk about that is often related to oligarch. People say that Roger copied this or was inspired by it. I don't know, at least to my nose. It doesn't smell explicitly like that, but people say it does. Terre d'Hermes from Hermes. This fragrance has been around for almost 20 years. Again, for a reason, it has spawned flankers. For a reason. This DNA is so timeless. Again, Hermes could have released this last year. There's something so special about it. And it is so distinctive. You gotta like Vetiver. Vetiver is very upfront here. It has such a strong identity to it. And those are my favorite types of fragrances. It doesn't smell like a mix of all the most popular things that will make it likable to everyone. It has an identity. It has a face that you can recognize. It has features to it that are unforgettable, not just another face in the crowd that might look nice. Authoritative, mature without smelling dated, similar to Declaration. Woody, vetiver, but still fresh. A little bit of a bitter orange note in there. Some black pepper, making it pretty spicy. Very classy stuff. This is gonna be around, I don't need to fight for it. None of us do. It's a stunning fragrance, Terre d'Hermes. Here's a semi-obvious one. I could have left it off, but I like this house a lot and I really appreciate what they have done and are doing. Amouage Reflection Man. I don't think they knew that they were creating a complete classic here. People say it's reminiscent of Le Mans from Jean-Paul Gaultier. I used to feel pretty strongly about that myself. I feel less so now, not to say I completely reject that idea, but it's way more special than that and it has more depth to it. It has more going on, soft, creamy, powdery, fresh white florals, creamy, smooth sandalwood, a little bit of spice in there perhaps, maybe even some orris, I'm not sure. It's a little buttery smelling. It smells purely elegant and classy and completely timeless. Le Mal's another fragrance that could have been on this list. I do believe that's also a timeless one. Again, excluding associations you might have. But this takes it to the next level. And not just because it came out after Le Mal. I think there is something about it that will always be modern. So there's a reason why it's one of their best sellers and it's kind of the gateway for people getting into the brand a lot of the time. And you may not like it because it is a distinctive taste. That's because it's special. Timeless stuff, Reflection Man. This fragrance, I believe, has undergone some reformulations that I'm not privy to. I haven't smelled any newer formulations or the newer bottle styles. I have an old bottle here, so I can't speak to what it smells like now, but I imagine it's the same special personality. This is Timbuktu from L'Artisan Parfumeur. Completely timeless, also a cult classic. And again, just smells like nothing you could really imagine until you smell it. And it's hard to explain. It is one where you kind of get all the ingredients existing separately, but together. It's not this melding of a, an accord that is hard to distinguish and hard to dissect, but the way it comes together is so perfectly proportioned and balanced, and it's made in a way where it makes it smell like nothing else. It is mostly woody incense, vetiver, smoky incense, but with this mango accord that's not overly sweet. It's kind of on the green side of things, and it's a little papery in its woodiness with papyrus. It's meant to paint a picture of the region of Timbuktu, maybe being in some kind of market or bazaar or something like that. I get what they mean by that. It is a captivating fragrance, but pragmatically, it's also very functional, very easy to wear. This could be a signature scent if you love it. And again, it smells like nothing else and nothing has smelled like it since, at least that I've tried. That is Timbuktu. And the final fragrance 
is yet another cult classic. I was talking about this ad nauseum as soon as I smelled it. I've been talking about it for a couple years now and it's only gotten more popular. So I think, you know, that's good for it. That'll help it stick around longer, but that doesn't, at least in my opinion, water down the special quality of this fragrance unless the brand decides to do something unwise with it. But this is Ganymede from Marc Antoine Barrois. I know, I think I turned a few of you guys on to this one and I think it's become one of the special fragrances in your collection, very unique. A little polarizing. Some people simply don't like it. I think it's kind of a 50-50 split. It's weird. It's almost familiar, but it's completely different from anything else. There's this fresh, easygoing, metallic feel that feels like, okay, yeah, you can wear this anytime, but as you smell into it, there's something odd about it. Immortel gives it a very odd kind of culinary feeling, almost like unsweetened maple or even like curry or something like that. It's kind of minerally in a way, a little salty smelling almost. And there's a beautiful smooth suede note in here that reminds me of the inside of a luxury car, like brand new leather seats. Does that smell like any other fragrance you've tried outside of this that has come before it? I think not. And this has inspired clones. Clone brands are now picking it up. That's how you know it's big. But nonetheless, it stands on its own as something that will carve its own lane from here forward. Nothing has really smelled like this. This is a very special fragrance by Quentin Biche, and I'm thankful to know it. I'm thankful to feature it and love it, and it'll always be a mainstay on my channel in some capacity. So let me know if you like Ganymede. If you've tried it based on my recommendation or anyone else's, let's talk about it down in the comments. Alrighty, you can find links to all these fragrances down in the description. I'm going to have a way hopefully for you to sample all of them before blind buying a bottle. But of course, barring Oligarch because it's unavailable right now. So we'll see about that in the future and like the video if you liked the video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.